All right, guys, so we're back closing out the fourth part of our series where we've been talking about how to build a real estate website, funnel, and landing page all in one. So we've talked about how to build a funnel, how to get it to capture leads, and now I want to bring it to full circle on how you can actually automate this funnel. So what we're going to talk about is how to use Zapier today, and a lot of you have probably have heard of it. You're not sure what it is. But I believe every real estate agent, every business owner should have a Zapier account because it just simply allows you to automate things that you're already doing. So those same emails that you send out that really don't require a whole lot of thought, you're just plugging in your client's information or maybe you need to automatically upload some files. Zapier is a great thing to create a workflow when something happens. It automatically does an action. So that way in the background, you have things running and you can actually focus on income producing activities because a lot of real estate agents, they lose focus because they get caught up in all this admin task. And the other thing that's super important about implementing Zapier into your website and all of your lead generation, um, you know, things that you're doing is that you need to automate this. They need to get straight into your CRM so they can get on that smart campaign so you can be notified so you can pick up the phone and call them or have your ISA call them or your, you know, your assistant. The You only have a small window of time to actually get to these people before they move on and pick up another or choose another realtor that's actually going to pick up the phone and talk with them. So Zapier is a great tool that allows us to automate our business, but we connect different apps with it. Right now, I think there's over 8,000 applications and websites that you can actually connect to Zapier and it allows all these systems to come together. And we'll show you that. But basically, the way it is, is you create, create a workflow, which is called a Zap, and that triggers an action once a specific event happens. So this is going to save us time with repetitive tasks help us streamline some workflows, creating different apps and services together. So we can kind of have everything in one place. It's going to improve efficiency and kind of reduce errors. And it's going to help us enhance communication with our leads and our clients properly and obviously increase production by automating all of these tasks. So a quick uh, terminology that you need to become familiar with when using Zapier is you have a trigger. A trigger is basically an event that starts a Zap, which is the workflow. So if we are doing a Facebook lead gen ad and we have that form, the moment somebody submits that form, if I didn't have Zapier, I would have to manually download that, upload it to my CRM, and that wastes time. But with Zapier, we can connect those two systems together that the moment a lead comes in, I can say, so the moment a new submission to that form, Zapier is going to see that because it's going to constantly be watching that Facebook lead gen form. So when that new entry comes in, it automatically grabs that information and triggers an action. So we can you know, add it to our CRM. So the action is the event that happens. You can actually have several events in a workflow. Maybe you want the lead to go to your CRM and you want to be emailed that a lead has been imported or you want to create a folder for that lead. Whatever it may be, you can create several um, actions as well. And again, the Zap is the automated workflow. So um, that is the, the workflow that we're creating. And the apps are obviously the different types of systems that you are connecting to that. And then your fields are basically going to be what are you copying over? So in that lead gen form, I'm obviously going to want first name, last name, email, phone number. And then I have that information. I have to take those fields and put them where KV Core or whatever your CRM is knows that this field is first name. So we put that in the first name blank. And you're going to see that visually um, here in a second. And then filters allow you to set conditions. Only do this if or do this when. So we'll again go over that. So the way Zapier is going to work is we're going to create an account. And then from there, we'll connect all of our other accounts. And so what I'm going to show you today, um, as I'm going to share my screen here now, is that we are going to show you about the forms that we talked about. So in the last one, we talked about lead capture. So if you're gonna have somebody download your buyer's guide, your seller's guide, or connect whatever type of form that you have, you wanna automate that process and make sure that they're in your CRM. We did talk about too, that make sure that you're confirming that that information that they have, that you're validating 
that it is correct. And so the way I told you to validate it was, and I'll show you here in this form, is by making sure that you email them the link or text them the link instead of redirecting them, because this is super important. We don't want to give away free stuff if people aren't willing to give up something to get that. So here I'm using Jod Forms to build a form. Um, you can use whatever form builder you want. You can even do this with Google Docs. Jod Forms does have a free version. Um, if you're using WordPress type sites, you could use something like Ninja Forms. A lot, um, there's Contact7 form. There's all kinds of free ones out there. I've done a whole video on form builders, so you can actually go to my YouTube channel and see my reviews on those. But for here, we're using JotForm. I like this because it's all in one place. My VAs or my assistants can actually see uh, this information. It's not like they have to log in the website. It's just all right there on this external website. So we built um, downloading uh, the Houston Buyer's Guide. And so we've collected their first name and last name. Now, if you're using something like KV Core, you definitely have to collect the first name. It is a required field. And then obviously the email address I want to be required. Um, and then I have my opt-in language, depending on your area, make sure that you're following uh, those rules there and letting them know what they're signing up for. And then I didn't make mobile number um, required because again, this is just a free guide. It's not like we're trying to set an appointment or anything like that. So I just would love to get their email so I can put them in a drip campaign and nurture them every week. So once you have this built, and I have videos on my YouTube on how to build these as well, once you have it built, you can actually go look in. And so one of the things that we want is to be able to um, tell them, hey, thank you for requesting a copy. So the way I'm validating, you can do this two ways. You can do it built in with your form where it automatically emails the user a confirmation email. And this says, thank you for requesting a copy of our free Houston Buyer's Guide. Click the link to download your free copy today. So the moment they click that form, they're going to get a success message that says, hey, thank you for submitting and requesting to download this guide. Please check your email or if you're texting to them, please check your text messages for a link to download this resource. So that's going to let them know, hey, that fake email I just gave, I need to go update it and resubmit it. So this way, you know that they're getting the, you're getting a real email address for the exchange of this information. So you do not have to do this. You can actually have Zapier send the email out for yourself. Whatever is easier for you, you do that. Um, and then uh, make sure you save that. So um, let's move over to Zapier. So Zapier, again, they do have a free account, but for a lot of these actions working with the forms, they might require you to have a premium account. It's around, 33 to $35 a month, depending on your tax. It's $29.99 a month, I think. Um, if you pay monthly, if you pay the whole year, I think they give you like 30% off. Um, so whatever plan works for you, but you really just need the basic played, paid plan to get access most to everything. And then you'll get a certain number of tasks, which means how many times you've triggered that workflow. And then you get so many zaps that you can create. So on this plan, I can create 20 workflows. As you see, I already have 14. This really does save me between my marketing business, my real estate business, even um, agent attraction, all of those things. It saves me about 30 to 40 hours of work that I'm not sending out emails or even having to pay that for an assistant to do. So very highly recommend it. So um, to create a zap, it's actually pretty easy. So when you log in, it takes you to the dashboard. You can click create a zap and then manually enter this in, or you can come over here and type in the name of your form builder. So I'll do jot form and then we'll click that. And then I want to link it to KV Core. Um, this is what I use for my CRM. So we've connected the two apps that we want to send information from jot form to KV Core. And when do we want to do this? So when this happens, we select a trigger. So when a new submission comes into jot form, it's going to trigger the workflow. And then what do I want it to do inside of KV Core? So obviously the new submission, I want to create a contact. I want it to add that lead to my database. So once you have this set up, you click try it. And then it's going to redirect you to a visual where it looks like you're building a workflow. Now you can click right away, click create zap, and it's going to give you a basic thing to select the app and then you add the action. So. Um, so right here is the trigger. 
So the first thing that we're, you're going to have to do is choose an account. So we're going to choose an account. Mm -hmm. Now I am already logged in. So, um, you know, you'll have to connect it. Usually I think with job forms, you just log in uh, with your username and password. It'll bring up a pop-up window. You log into job form and it uses that. Um, if you're using some of the other form builders, you have to have either a raw hook or you get an API key and that's how you log mm -hmm. in. So whatever it does, it gives you the step-by-step -step information on how to connect that specific app. Very simple. Um, so we got that connected. We're gonna say continue. Now we're going to choose the form, which is the download the Houston buyer's guide. So you already need to have your form created. Now I will tell you, um, it's gonna say continue. We're gonna see if we can pull any um, information from that. It's gonna to look to see if there's previous uh, entries. So we're gonna use this entry. If you're using other things like Ninja Forms, sometimes that once you connect the account and you have that trigger set up where it's watching for a new submission to come in and you've got the API key in or you've installed the URL that it's gonna watch um, for a webhook, sometimes then you have to go then over to the form and actually submit a test entry. So sometimes depending on the app, it won't pull from previous entries. If you have an empty form database, then you need to put in a, uh, a test entry to use for this to make sure it works because it's gonna show you step-by-step step if it actually works. So uh, just be mindful of that. So I found a submission and then I'm gonna say use this one. So we'll say continue right down here with selected record. And then I got to choose an account. So now you see it's down to my KV core. I'm going to choose an account. So we can say um, change, but I only have one account logged in here. So you will have to log in. The where you will do this in KV core is where you will go over to your lead engine and there's going to be a, a lead Dropbox link. And then when you click that, it'll give you your Zapier API key and it will automatically uh, connect it as well. And I've done videos on that as well. So you're going to say connect new account. So we connect that. Or actually, I'm not connecting new account. Sorry. So I've already connected my account. So we're going to say continue. And then you see right here, all of the fields inside KV Core have come up. So we're able to customize all of this that we want to use right here. So in this entry, it's going to be super simple. We're going to click in the, the field. So it says first name. And then here, because it's using the JotForm logo right here, I know that this is the information from the test data that came in from that form submission. So what you're going to do is just click um, your answers. So you're going to scroll until you find. So right here, first name. Jacob. So I'm going to click out of that. Once I have it, lead type. So I know this is a buyer's guide, so I'm going to click buyer, but you can do buyer, seller, renter, both. So I'm going to click buyer. You can add multiple values as well. I'm going to click here for the last name. So I'm going to scroll down till I see the field last name right here. And then emails. So we'll go find out where I enter the email. So answers your email. And it's gonna show you the field name. So whatever you named your field, that's what you're gonna see. And then the title of the field and then whatever the user put in that blank. So I'm, I don't have anything for a phone number on this one, but what I would do is come down here. Oh, actually I do have one, <laughs> mobile number and there. So you don't have to collect mobile number. You can just do email, lead status new, and then form capture mm -hmm. method. I could say, you know, this was my uh, buyer's guide download form, whatever you want to name it. So you remember what's the source. Well, uh, this came from my website. So I'm going to put in that. So, you know, I know exactly where the source came in. So it allows you to keep track of the date registered. You're going to do the submission date. So this was created right there. And then if you know what city they're interested in, maybe you're running a form that, say, that says, you know, um, check out these just listed homes in Houston, Texas, Katy, Texas, Sugarland, Texas. You can come in here and just put what city they're interested in. And that way you know what they're looking in because that's the form they downloaded. Maybe you're doing uh, homes under 300,000, 
homes under 500,000 for that landing page you're sending people to. You can put that price range in. If you did this as a listing for a home that they wanted to learn more about that home or tour it, maybe that's what your form was about. You can put that MLS number for that home. Um, so if you have this information, so remember you can make this form any way you want. However, you're capturing a lead, you just line that data up to all these fields. If you're doing a team and you want to sign this to a specific agent, go ahead. If you don't have a team version of KV Core, you don't need to do anything. And here you can say downloaded buyer's guide from buyer's funnel. And so that way I know. Oops. And that way you know exactly where they came from. Okay. And then again, sign to agent. If you want to add tags, um, you can add buyer's guide and then you separate the tags by a pipe symbol. And then you can say um, buyer, website, lead, however you want to um, do that. Then once you have that, you'll say continue and then test step. This is important. It's actually going to insert this lead into your database and it will return a success if it was able to do it and it says it was sent and then you could log into your kv core and check that as well and so then you'll say publish and then this will publish the zap so i'm going to give you a few other tips before we wrap this up is you want to name your zap as well so you can say literally um buyer's guide form to kv core whatever allows you to remember it it will save it and then when we go back to our zaps, some other things that you can do is you can actually create folders. As you see, I have multiple folders, um, you know, dividing my businesses. So you can drag that, um, that zap, that workflow into a folder as well. And then on top of it, um, you want to make sure it's on. If Sometimes it will turn off if it didn't test successfully you want to make sure it's on. And the last thing that you can do, let's say in the form, you decided you didn't want the form to email, you can add other tasks in here. So we would just say edit zap. If we wanted to add, maybe we wanted to send an email and you have um, say Gmail. You can click Gmail and say you want to send an email and then you would connect your account and write out the email and there you would include the link. Um, you know, there's so many other apps out there that you can do. Maybe you want to add it to your contacts, your Google Drive. Um, like I said, there's 8,000 plus apps out there. Um, and some other things that you could use this for too, you can have it automate the moment somebody signs maybe a dot loop form or it signs, you know, um, even jot forms, you can do digital signatures. The moment they sign a form that you have it create a folder for them and upload documents to that folder so you're not manually downloading them, uploading them. There's so much you can do with this automation. I do have several videos on Zapier on my YouTube channel where you can go and see the full use of it and your sky's the limit. There's tons of blog articles out there too. But really learn to use this, especially for your lead generation automation. You can use this for your real estate business side, even maybe any landing pages and funnels to connect them to your CRM. I've had people use this to connect because they use a couple different CRMs because they have an ISA. So even the ISA that I use, um, when my lead comes in, we have a Zap that's set, set to import the new KV Core lead to their CRM so they can make calls. And anytime they update, it automatically updates in my CRM so I don't have to log in to that second system. So it's a great way to take all these resources, all these tools that we have and combine them into one system. And again, this will truly help your lead generation and follow up because that's where most people in this business fail is they don't follow up um, enough and they don't follow up quick enough because we're in a society where everything's at your fingertips. If you don't answer them, especially if they gave you their number, they're moving on to the next person. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about creating a real estate website, sales funnel, um, landing pages, anything to do with this type of stuff, Zapier, feel free to reach out to me on all my social medias. I'm JM Shireman. My website's jacobshireman.com and you can find me on 
YouTube as well. Just Google Jacob Sharman. Not many people are going to come up. And I would love to help you in any way that I can. So just let me know. And thank you again for tuning in.